Wow, that worked right. The uh, the schedule for Facebook actually did work. It did actually start on time. Though on my clock, it was a little bit later than normal. So, right. <coughs> Shall we get started? Right, thank you very much all for coming. Uh, everyone's filing in, so that's good. It's a beautiful, sunny day. Let's go to the men's screen. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone? Right, today we're gonna need a, a set of dumbbells, a step, and water. Okay, that's all you're gonna need. Right, unfortunately, I will have to apologize. Uh, I may end up having to actually cut the stream short due to a phone call which I need to, I have to take, unfortunately. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope it happens later, rather than sooner. The only thing could say was in the morning, so we'll have to play it by ear. If this if this stream does get interrupted, I will record it again from scratch and then repost it. Okay, right well, thank you all for coming. Uh, let's let's get on with that actually. So today's temperature is 18 degrees. Nice. Well, in here anyway. Got the door open to give it a little bit of uh, heat out. Excellent. Everyone's everyone's in. So what we'll do is we'll quickly go over the uh, myth number 20, the top 23 nutrition and exercise myths by Declan Doyle. Thank you, Declan, for this. Right. The more you sweat, the more you burn. The rise of classes is uh, where you turn up the heat is never ending. From hot yoga, spinning to even workouts in tents. The wild claims have yet uh, have, have come, come with them. The idea that the hotter it gets, the more calories you burn is ludicrous. ludicrous. I really can't say my words today for some reason. While your t-shirt might be drenched uh, with more than you did in a class in normal room temperature, all you're losing is a little more water, not calories. This study, for example, found that in the uh, in a 90 minutes hot yoga class, women burned an average 330 calories and men burned 460 calories. That's over 90 minutes. Okay, so basically, it's actually if you work it out, we're actually burning more calories in this class because we burn between two to uh, 250 for 45 minutes. That's equivalent of walking at a pace, at an average pace, for 60 minutes. So that's basically just without actually getting too out of breath. So just imagine that, it doesn't really work at all. The truth, sweat is not, is, is, uh, uh, sorry, sweat is your body's way of finding uh, a way to regulate the temperature through evaporation off the skin. It's not fat leaving your body, and turning up the heat isn't going to speed up anything except your thirst. Thirst, yes. Granted, when you dehydrate, you will actually burn a few more calories, 
because your metabolism will actually start trying to get the water to it and it can't get to it. But it'll do you uh, an injustice in the long run. Dehydration is a worse thing than actually just burning a few extra calories. So basically that's why I open the door so I don't get too hot. <coughs> so, right. Right, so we're going to start off. Today we're going to need the step, but we're going to do a, a few warm-ups because uh, this session is going to be a little bit uh, more in the hips as well, and also uh, with a little bit of jumping and jumping around. Unfortunately, the uh, the text is back to the small one and the same font. Sorry about that. It was pre-set up. I will fix it for Friday. Right. So let's start with the warm-up. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our foot out, and what we're going to do first off, we're going to uh, bend it over at the hip and out again, like a little bit of a toe tap. That's it. So we're warming up the hip. This is going to be really good for one of the uh, step exercises which I'm going to do, which I call the flamenco stamp. Three, two, one, and let's change. So you should feel it in your hip. Try and keep the other foot facing forward. You don't want to be twisting your hips on it too much. Otherwise you're taking the actual action out of actually working this hip. Three, two, one, and let's march on the spot, whilst I go and get my, uh, my board. Step, whatever. Right, so we're going to do up, up, down, down. So if you haven't got a step, just lift your knee a little bit higher just to try and get that cardio going. Right, so we're going to go up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. That's it. Just nice and easy. Use those arms to help blood flow. Should have this music actually on for the uh, flamenco step. Right, and we're going to change feet. Three, two, one, and change. So swap your foot over, so whichever one rides up. So I'm now starting on my pink side, which is this one. Other hand, there you go. Excellent, good wrap. We're going to go now into bum kicks. So we're going to go up, kick your bum, down, swap feet, kick your bum, swap feet, kick your bum. So I'll do it sideways. You can see, I'm not going forward. Some people do that, they think that the foot's attached to the back of the head. It's not. Exactly. He's telling me to shut up and just get on with it. Right, what we're gonna do now is, we're gonna do fly. So we're gonna go up, and arms out, and leg back. You can keep that back leg straight, you can do. First time I did this one, it kinked up. Obviously the hamstrings are a little bit tight today. Try not to push the board. And when you step and you want to throw your arms out, you want to step in a dive. The force wants to go that way. Try and get it down so the board doesn't go sliding across your floor. I have forgot the microphone. Yes, I have. <laughs> Turned it off a minute ago. Excellent, good. Right, we're march on the spot. We get ready for the main exercise session. Right. So we're going to do one full set of step work and then two sets of the exercises. We start with the foot down, down. We're going to start on one leg. I'm going to start on the green leg. Three. You can start two, on whichever leg you want. One. And up, up, down, down. For people who aren't going to be forehand, on the rests in this section, we will be having active rests so you won't stop for about 10 minutes. But if you feel like it's so where you need to stop, you stop. 
Okay, just get your breath. Like, I might need my inhaler. I'll stop, have the inhaler, then get back. Twelve seconds. Three, two, one, and active breath. What we're going to do is flick our feet out, almost like running sideways on the spot so you could go sideways. And you go the other way. It's actually quite a good exercise, this. Right, we're going to swap legs. Three. Two, I'm going to start on this one, one the pink one, and let's go. Two. Let's get a little bit more room to it. Right, we're going to add the next active rest. We will start the new exercise. So whilst you're doing the exercise rest, out of the active rest, I'll explain it to you, okay? Hopefully we'll get a little bit of difference in the Three, step exercises, two, otherwise one. a bit boring. Right, Change so active rest, we'll just flick on the spot, so what we're going to do is, we're going to go one foot up on the board, up, knee rise, as you turn around you're going to step down and back, and then swap, tap, up, tap, up. Three, You're going to two, try and keep one. that knee Exercise facing forward. Three. This leg will twist in the hip. It's working in the hip. If you have hip problems, just do a knee rise. Okay, so let's go. So up, tap, up. So you're doing your feet should end up looking like that. I can, I can right angle. Careful about stability on the board. On the board. Make sure your full foot is on the board. And you're not just hanging off it. That's it. Bring that knee right nice and high up as you come back. Three, two, one. Change That's exercise. That's it. How was that? Was that alright? So the next exercise we're going to do is going to do a side stamp. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up, stamp, up, back. Change like up, back, up. We go. If you've got a long one, you Three, might want to turn it on two, its side so you've actually got a short side. Exercise to do it. Four. Let's go. So it's up, tap, up, up, tap, up. Change legs. Up, 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 tap, up. That's it. Up, tap, up. What we'll do is we'll do the flamenco stamp again after this one just to make sure that you know what you're doing. Or make, make sure that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you see that? I went out then. Three, two, right, one. excellent. Change Active exercise. rest. I've just noticed actually that RPE monitor is just in the way I'm actually stamping my foot. So when I stamp my foot, if you do it on the floor, you put your foot on the step and then you go forward and you stamp sideways. Okay, so this knee is facing two, forward, one, this knee is facing around to the angle. So let's go and stamp up, bring it up, down, up, down, and then go stamp. That's it, good. Get a bit more energy this time. You don't have to slam it down to the ground. I'm actually just tapping my feet, tapping my toes, and my heel just kind of, as soon as my heel hits the floor, I'm bouncing back up again. So it's really, Three, two, it's not high impact, because you're controlling it. Exercise. Right. Let's do active rest. Almost through it. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna do side step. So we're gonna step up, Arms out and back again. Swap sides. Three, arms out, back two, in. A bit more of an stability exercise. Six. Get those arms working. Remember to keep your foot flat on the board. Don't want it flipping up on you. That's a good. 
So what you may notice is, I've actually tried to make each of these sessions a little bit more individual. So, Freak Out Fridays, or if it's not a Friday, it's Freak Out Fitness, will be more fun exercises. Exercises that have been invented just for a little bit of laugh. Three, Things like that, two, but a little bit calm. Change exercise. Right, margin the spot, or hide your breath. Calm workouts is strength and conditioning. And step up is a cardio session. So we're going to do knee raises this time. We're going to do some Three, stand up, one two, knee up, back, nine. swap legs. Exercise one knee up, seven. swap back. That's a nice high knee. On the rest, I will explain something that could happen uh, in the main session. Three, I will explain two, why. One, so, as you rest, exercise. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go up, up, side, side, up, up, back. So, it's pick one foot to go up, up, to the side, the side, up, up, back. Swap legs. Three, two, one. Exercise it's like up, up, down, down, but you go into the side instead. That's it. Oh, I started with the wrong foot then. Think about what to say and how to do the exercise afterwards. It's a bit difficult. So I'm going to shut up and just get it right. Remember to swap those legs. If it's difficult, I just bounce one foot back. So bounce up, bounce up. Three. Excellent. Good. Two, right, let's do the active rest again. Change exercise. I'm going to do flight again. So you step up, you put yourself arms forward, leg back. Try not to hyperextend that back. Keep your tummy tight. Look straight forward. Three. Two, Make sure you've got balance. One. I'm going to do a Exercise diagonal. Nine. So we're going to go up, down. Swap legs. Up, down. That's it. So I'm always looking in one spot. It helps with a bit of seasickness or motion sickness. Also, it means that you're trusting where your feet are going. If you don't trust where they go, you'll always be wobbly. The more you trust your body in doing what it's doing, the more stable Three, it will be. Two, one, change exercise. Excellent. Right, last exercise afterwards, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do nice, slight, uh, slightly wider than the shoulder width apart, stands, one foot on there, we're gonna squat down and up. Squat down and up. Three, so two, get ready. One. We're we'll doing second, uh, 20 seconds on one side, 20 seconds on the other. There is a oh, more active way of doing this, but if, as you can see, on a slippy floor, it's not ideal. Five, three, two, one. So the way you could do it, you could swap over and do it the other direction by swapping over on the board. So it's better on card. Uh, Carpet, or if you've got an empty slate mat underneath you, uh, you step. Three, two, two one. one. Excellent, right. So I'm going to put them uh, the, a step away for now, over there. You might need a chair later on, just to sing up to you, depending on what, uh, how you can get down and get up again. Right, so. Water break down, have a bit of water, you've just been working hard. So, there's a lot of jumping and uh, plyometric exercise in here. You can regress it back to be a low impact. If you're one of these people, 
who find that too much jumping can make you want to go to the loo, it's probably because you've got a very uh, weak pelvic floor. There are exercises doing that. Glute bridges are a brilliant uh, way of actually supporting you, uh, your muscles down there. Less the said the better really, at what muscles it's going to be working. But if you do find that, then it's probably due to a weak pelvic floor. You need to see that, uh, see that if you actually need to go to the toilet quite a lot. I know if you're a bloke, you've probably got an inflamed prostate, but neither here nor there. Right, so the first exercise, what we're going to do is we're going to do climb the rigging. So we're going to put our hands up and we're going to pretend that we're trying to climb the rigging. So one hand goes up, Three, the opposite hand two, goes down. One. Hand exercise up. one. So the, basically like climbing a ladder. And let's go. So you're going to nice and easy, if you want to do it more in bite, slow it down a little bit. If you want to put a little bit of cardio, put a little bit of bounce. Try to keep those feet facing forward. Can to keep really nice and high. I always want to grab hold of the imaginary rungs. It's a bit like a spotty dog. You can do that instead. You're really sure you're raging if you know who a spotty dog is. Three. Two. One. one. Excellent. Right, we're gonna have a quick uh, quick rest. We do star jumps next. So star jumps. Yeah, we do star jumps, which feet together. Hands down by the side, as you jump out, your hands go up. The full one goes up to the side. If you have problems or high blood pressure, just go down to the side there and back again. If you don't want to do high and tight, you can do star step out, where you just step from side to side. Let's get going. This is the one where I know a lot of women, especially after childbirth, end up needing the toilet a lot. And this is the one which really dictates if you get a weak poet floor. That's it, can try to keep nice and straight. No hunching. Look forward, shoulder blades back. If you like me, you can have a mess. There we go, right, quick rest. And we're doing some dumbbell punches, we're going to get the dumbbells. Stand slightly wide and shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, hips slightly back as well. And we're going to punch out and use your, your legs as springs as we punch three, out. Two, one, exercise three. I'm going to not rotate mine because unfortunately my elbow is slightly inflamed today. So I'm going to go more in a hammer curl punch instead of actually twisting out. If you ever do boxing or anything like that, or martial arts mainly, the twist gives it a call a snap. Gives it a lot more power. But it does affect your muscles in slightly different ways. This is a lot better. Five, three, two, one. Change exercise. All right, we're done the wrong way around. What doesn't matter? We've got squat jumps now instead. And it's star jumps before squat jumps. So what we're going to do is we're going to squat down and we're going to try and elevate ourselves off the floor. If you don't want to do Three, high impact, two, just come up and onto your toes and down again. Four. Let's get going. Try and get those hips back. Doesn't matter how far you go down. Just try and get that explosive action through your thighs. I use my hands almost like I'm trying to push the air down. That's it, good. 15 seconds left. Brilliant. Five seconds. Gosh, I'm feeling this now. Two, one. Right. Change exercise. If you get dizzy, especially that one, go to just to, uh, calf raises at the end. Try and get your breathing going. Don't hold your breath. Right, the next one is dumbbell swings. Like kettlebell swings, you're gonna hold Two, them together. One. Get into a wide stance between your legs. And what you're gonna do is 
you're going to clench your bottom and thrust your hips forward and just get the dumbbells up. There should be no use in your shoulders whatsoever. So I'm not actually, there's no muscles being used in my shoulders, it's just a pivot point. What you're doing is you're working your glutes and your hips. This is also another one, good one for pelvic floor. Because you're actually using the pelvic floor muscles to really tighten up. Change exercise. Right. Alternate clean and press. We've got one dumbbell. You didn't make the actual rest one really quickly. Put it in front of you, in between your feet. What you do is you get back into a squat position, hips back, knees over your toes. Two, one hand, up, one. punch. Exercise down, takes. swap, up, punch, down. Let's go. So remember to try and get those legs back. If you can't get all the way down, I'll show you now, you can swap halfway down. But it's better to get all the way down and swap. And try not to smash your tiled floors. So heavy weights are a lot harder. Try and keep those, ab those abdominals really nice and tight. And the back nice and straight. Change exercise. Right. Go to mountain climber. You can either use your stool or your chair. I'll show you with the chair. We're just going to put our hands on the side of it. If you want to use the ground, you can you put your hands on the ground. And we're just going to bring our knees up Three, to our two, chest. One. Exercise. Like you're trying to run on the spot. So these are a lot easier. I find these a lot easier. Especially a lot easier on the bike. But if you can't get down, you can still do this. The faster you do, the more higher impact it is. But the more <laughs> having to push it along. That's why I like to just slightly put my shoulders above it, so I'm actually pushing it down, not in a diagonal. Three, two, two one. one. Change exercise. Right. Whoa, it's full on today, isn't it? Right, go back to, I think we'll go over to one, we're going to do reach over rows. So we're going to pull back one. and punch Exercise over. Eight. Pull back so your elbow goes behind your spine and over. Up and over like a reach over. So you're working your lats there, but you're also working your rhomboids at the back. Do it for a few more seconds, then we'll swap over. I like to just put my arm on my thigh and let's swap. So it's another punching motion, really. Try and get a little bit of a twist in there. You should really feel it just there, especially when you're trying Three, to stop two, the movement of the weight. One. Change exercise. Coordinates. I know it's been a staple in a few of the exercises recently but sometimes they get stuck in your head. So these are up, out, one side, cover. Three, two, one. Keep you nice Exercise and still. Nine. The back, forward, out. One side, like your tubber. Up, out, like your side, tubber. There we go. Where I'm living, you could stand on a line and say up, out, Yorkshire, Lancashire. The war still being fought in by Oswick right about the War of the Roses. It was never signed here, the actual peace treaty. So you can actually fight the War of the Roses legally in Barn Oldswick. Three. There you go, useless trivia. One. We've got plenty of them. Change exercise. Right, we're gonna do a switch lunge. We do this without weight. What they do is we're going to get into a lunge position and people who want to do it you can actually so what we do is to switch by doing a little bit of a hop the smaller the hop it is the uh, less it's going to work here two, if you're a bit concerned just do reverse lunges and let's go 
trying to look forward I keep my hands on my hips which means that my shoulder blades are back my, my back's nice and straight and I'm looking forward you could speed it up for more of a cardio workout if you want but you can leave it at an average speed just to work those muscles as well 10 seconds Five, three, two, two one. Water break. And an hour and a half minute uh, rest. No, minute and a half rest. Water break. Right, I do have my uh, stream data on there. I'm actually quite nicely good. No frames dropped at the moment, so like a. We had a Monday. Oh, it is a toughie, yes. Every so often, a good toughie is great. But yes, even now I'm sweating like I was business. Let's have a look. 17 degrees in here at the moment with the door open. So that's a good temperature and a good sweat, which means I'm working my cardiovascular system and I'm actually using fat instead of muscle and I'm not using uh, CTP, which is creatine phosphate or phosphate creatine, whichever person you talk to, which is for slow movement and powerful, ex uh, powerful motions. Right, we've got 10 seconds to climb the rigging, so drink your drink. Let's get back to it. Three, you may be a little two, bit slower, one, doesn't matter. Let's just go for it. You might find your legs are a little bit wobbly during this. So just slow it down if you want. Sometimes I find doing cardio exercises slower. It works. So we've been doing cardio, we we'll like to just walk around in circles afterwards just to cool down a little bit. Heart rate's quite high. What we might do is, we might test our blood. Uh, oh, Three, two, what's it called? One, heart beat, heart rate. Steps. Right, squat jumps. Everyone loves to hate squat jumps. Now I'm birthies. So, hips back, arms up push back that wind and jump up. If you find Three, that your knees are caving two, in, one. try and concentrate with your two. hands in between your legs and jump up like that. Because it'll stop you from actually caving your legs in. Because if you cave your legs in, you can damage your knees, your ankles and your hips. So all muscular imbalance. I see a lot of people, lots of trainers, they don't deal with uh, the vagus which is that, which a lot of women have, and some men. Strangely enough, I think it's more of a high estrogen thing. I don't know why. Three, two, one, change exercise. Right, dumbbell punches. So this is where, if you're getting lightheaded, you know, just to slow down a little bit. Three, ready? Two, Wide stance, one. hips back, Exercise nicely three. tight and tummy, let's punch out. Concentrate on that snap. Breathe. I tend to breathe on every second one, so it's like in, out, in, out. It's the same one. I punch and I tend to breathe that way. I find that easy for myself. But everyone's breathing patterns are different. Five, three, three two, two, one. one. Star jumps or star step out. Remember star step out, just to the side, just to the side. But I would recommend that you put your hands above your head on that one to really get your heart working. 
Three, two, one. And go! Four. Excellent, man. The phone call here. Brilliant. I hope I get a hit. So this is another one where people tend to go heels out like that. And that actually really just hurt. So if you can see yourself in a mirror doing that, try and get your toes pointing slightly outwards or forwards. So you can see a lot of these are sneaky, sneaky exercises for the hips. That's why I've done them like this. Right, so we're going to do kettlebell swing. If you have a heavy kettlebell, you can actually do it with one by grabbing hold of the bulb and then throwing it forward. So if you see my arms, all they're doing is swinging. It's just a pendulum Three, action two, of the actual glutes. As soon as the exercise is started, I'll just use one, but you can use two if you want. I find if you're using two and you're pressing them together, your shoulders can activate and want you to, uh, your shoulders want to move. So you need to concentrate on just letting those shoulder joints moving up and down easily. If the weight goes above your eye line, up there, like I'm thrusting now, it's too even light. If it goes there, it's too heavy. And if you're trying to uh, use your back, it's too heavy. Three, With this two, exercise, you've got to be careful not to chuck it. That's the one thing. That's the worst thing about this one. If it's slightly fluted, it's harder to hold on to. So I tend to use my, put my fingers in between the joints like that and hold it really nice and tight. Right, what have we got now? Clean and press. So a single dumbbell. Three, two, one. Exercise six. And down, and up. So those people who can't get down very far, you can always put a towel on your step and actually put your step in front so you can put it there so it's easier for you to change hands. So try not to lean over because you want to lean forward when you want to pick something up. So put the weight in between your feet. So you can't lean over, you've got to lean backwards to get to it. But a towel Three, works well because it stops it two, from rolling away. Change exercise. Mountain climbers. Right, I'm going to show you the one, another version of doing it on the floor, but you can do it on a chair or the stool if you want a bit lower. Or if you've got bad wrists like myself and you don't want to put them flat on the floor, or bending them, Three, you can use two, dumbbells if you turn one, them like this a slightly. Exercise seven. So if you turn them at an angle, you can still do. The anti climbers. You've got to be careful, you don't push them out. So again, an anti-slip mat or a, or a nice sturdy towel underneath is brilliant. Or just put your weight above it and make sure your weight are directly above the actual weight. Your shoulders are above the weight, sorry. Because the weight above the weight doesn't make much sense. Lots of the time, seven seconds. Three, two, two, one. Change exercise. Right, reach over raw. Anytime you feel sick or anything like that, you can feel that once you've drunk a little bit of too much water. Take a step back, have a breather. Three, Let it settle two, and then go back one. to it. Sometimes, sometimes I do forget about things like that. So I'll elbow backwards and then over. Elbow backwards. I know of it. So you can see, I'm just twisting on the spot, I'm not leaning forward, and I'm definitely not trying to lean back. That's why another reason why I use my arm there, because when I hit there, it reminds me not to go forward or backwards. And let's swap sides. Just two exercises left. Hey, it's been a good one today. Three, two, one. Change exercise. Maybe I should have called it cardio death. Nah. Coordinates. So again with this one, try and keep the weights together. It is harder going sideways because you will find that one arm is longer than the other. You'll want to twist 
Three, Try not to, two, unless you want one. to work your twisting Exercise motion. Nine. Then you can actually twist out to the side instead. Let's do that one then. Shall we do a twist? Coordinate twist. So up, out, twist out, twist out, up, out, twist out. Try and keep those knees facing forward. You will get a little bit of a bend in them, but try and keep those hips facing forward. You can see the difference? You're not actually activating your chest as much. Where this one, where you go across, you're actually activating your chest, you're working your chest out. Three, where two, this one, you're working more one, the obliques and exercise. the back. Right, we'll do switch lunge for the last one. So this one you can actually change it up slightly as well, you can do it like that. It's a good one to do, so switch lunge, let's go. Put this one purpose at the end. I like to call these finishes because they really do finish you off. I tend to, when I get tired, I use my arms to help pump. But if you find that you are actually getting impact in your knee, because it is actually high impact that, just go to reverse lunges. Or if you get too tired, reverse lunges as well. More than anything, never be afraid of taking a breather. Three, two, one. No point killing yourself. Right, cool down, right. What we're gonna do is gonna walk around. Right, I want you to try and find on my pink wrist, just where there's bone there, two fingers, put it on top, you should feel a pulse. I'll give you a few seconds to try and find it. You found it, we'll start counting. So count how many times you feel the pulse. In three, two, one, and go. Thirty-five. Stop. So I got thirty-five beats. So that's if you if you times it by four. So that's three, four, six, twelve, four, four, six, sixteen. So that's one hundred and forty-six at the moment for me. So I'm at the top end of the fat burning section, which is great for me. So if you want to know what you're doing, if you've done that. You can always put it in the comments or message it me and ask, how do you think I'm doing? And we'll, and we'll figure it out for you. So remember to keep walking now, just to get that heart rate down. Excellent. Because once you've got your heart rate down, you can take your, uh, take your pulse every 15 seconds, just to see. Once it gets below about 120, you can start doing stretches. And the fitter you are, the faster your heart rate will actually get back to normal. That's why when people are fit, they tend to... Sorry, I'm not stripping off now. Just start being uneven. Uh, they'll suddenly get up after about five minutes sitting down after doing a marathon thing. Well, I'm fine now, walk off. Right, so let's do some stretching. So we're going to stand shoulder width apart. Hands on our thighs, we're going to run down, nice straight bike, shoulder blades bike, and go down as far as we can. How are you doing? You are right? You're down there yet? Yeah? Try to keep your legs straight. Now we're going to come back up slowly. What we're going to do is to turn one leg out. It's facing the side, and we're going to do the same again. You won't be able to get down as far. You will feel it coming up a slightly different part of your back of your leg, and you might feel it slightly in your hip. Three, two, one, back up. Let's swap that leg over. So you have a 90 degree angle between the feet, bend over. Try and follow the foot facing forward. 
when you bend over like this, you'll want to go to an angle. And that's going to defeat all the object of actually trying to stretch that hip out. Two, one, let's go back up. Excellent. Right, we're going to do a long lunge. Clench that bottom to rotate the pelvis forward and push forward. If you want, you can hold on to the side, you can hold on to a chair in front of you so you don't actually uh, wobble too much. You will wobble, I always do. Three, two, one, stay there. What I want you to do is I want to pivot your back foot sideways so you will be facing slightly diagonal and then push again. You won't be able to clench your bum. <laughs> Three, two, one, now let's swap it over. So we're gonna go sideways, so the, that back foot's gonna face the camera, and that foot is gonna face the fridge for me. So I'm gonna pivot the back foot now forward, almost fall over. And, oh, yeah, completely lost my proprioception there. Clench my bottom and push forward. And this will stretch your hip. So the one with your fa foot facing in the wrong direction, that will do the inside of your leg. Your timer is complete. And two, one, and up. Oh, we'll just do the last stretch then. Let's stretch that to upper body. Really stretch up, try and reach that ceiling. This is where you end up showing your tummy button off to the neighbours. Wiggle it about, pretend you're a ballet dancer. Sorry, belly dancer, not ballet dancer. That's my ballet dancer. Right, and release. And thank you very much everyone. It's been a really hard, really interesting exercise session. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you haven't fallen on the floor unconscious. But I hope I'll see you all on Friday for Freak Out Friday. And we'll have a bit more fun, a bit more dance orientated exercises. And I'll see you later. Take care all. Bye for now. Love the Easter on the stream, actually please remember if you want to help out please spread the word for my Just Giving page for the message, the big swim, one mile in Lake Windermere in, oh, I can't remember if it's June or July now, but it's actually soon. Let's help raise that money for good for a good cause. Thank you very much and take care everyone.